Uh, UTEP is, is a couple years younger than, than IBM. We are celebrating our centennial uh, this year. And one of the things you have to know is that at UTEP, it all st started with engineering, uh, with mining engineering. And so we are the miners. And you can see our, our logo is a pick. And the pick looks a lot like the T, Jim thinks. And I, and, and I agree. So it's sort of ingrained in us to be thinking uh, about T-shaped uh, thinking. Uh, but I guess the real reason I'm supposed to be here is to give you an engineering perspective of the T-shape. The and as was mentioned earlier, uh, my discipline is in biomedical engineering. And so I am a child, actually, of the trading zone between medicine and engineering. Uh, and so my, my bent and my thinking is going to be, uh, has been shaped by that. And so what I'm going to talk to you about is how I think engineering education needs to move more towards a medical school model of, of education. Medical schools have been producing T-shaped individuals for 100 years uh, now. That's what they're all about. They're all about bringing broad-based people in and then giving them the depth within the medical school. And I think that's where engineering education uh, has, to, has to come from. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure today I'm, uh, we have the entire choir here. So I don't think I have to do anything to convince you about the need for, for T-shaped. And that's been done pretty well this morning already. But I, I do want to give you a couple uh, reading assignments if you haven't if you're not familiar with these documents that have shaped my thinking on it the first one they both came out in 2008 the first one is from the national academy of engineering uh, in 2008 they came out with the engineering grand challenges uh, the grand challenges for engineering i call, call them the global grand grand challenges because they really represent not all not every major issue but a lot of the major issues that are are uh, globe is facing. Uh, and they've been uh, categories in those, uh, in those four categories. Uh, they are, and, th and these, of course, are just representative samples. But they are an indication of the huge problems that we have to uh, attach now as, as engineers. And as been, has been said, uh, engineers alone cannot uh, attack these problems. We need to be working with uh, many, many disciplines in order to do that. And the second document, if you haven't seen, I, I recommend highly, that also came out in 2008, is a document by Jim Duderstadt, who's the former Dean of Engineering and President at, at Michigan. Uh, and he came out with a report called Engineering for a Changing World. And that's where he uh, uh, um, provided a, a, a template for a major transformation of engineering education, more towards a medical school model, as I'm going to describe, developing what he called Renaissance engineers, and bringing in this term of leadership and the importance of leadership skills, which I, which I haven't heard the word leadership yet t t today. I think leadership is a key uh, skill set of all T-shaped in in individuals. And it's what typically engineering schools try to do to some, to some extent. And what he was promoting is, is that medical school model where you have a broad-based undergraduate degree and then a very practice-based uh, professional degree at the, at the graduate level. And so at UTEP, we're, we're trying to move in that direction. We've developed a very broad-based undergraduate a degree program we're calling leadership engineering. And uh, quite frankly, leadership engineering is really based on the ABET A through K criteria. Uh, the engineering educators out here know that when I say that the A through K criteria con con contains both technical skill sets and, and what we typically call professional or skill sets. We used to call soft uh, skill sets. And what we do in engineering is focus quite heavily on the technical skill sets and do a lot of hand waving on the soft or professional skill sets. And mostly it's because we know how to measure learning on the technical skills. It's very difficult, to, much more difficult to measure learning on the uh, professional uh, skills. So what we are, we've designed this program in, in a way to, to equally and, and proportionately address both the technical skills and the, and the professional skills in a bre very broad base a program that also allows uh, enough flexibility in the program to bring in business skills, cultural skills, and other skill sets into the into the program as well. And then the idea is from there you move in to a very uh, practice-based uh, professional program where you get depth in a particular discipline. And so part of the understanding is in order to get that full T-shape, it takes more than the four years of a typical undergraduate education. And, and it's more like a five or six year uh, program where you, you combine this very broad-based undergraduate degree, much like uh, medical schools like to come into their program. And then you follow that up with a uh, a uh, professional master's degree where, where, it's, where they focus and, and make it very practice-based. Now, the other thing that's required on this is, and the other part of that medical school model is, is really a, um, uh, a new business plan uh, and a new business approach for both engineering schools and, and companies that hire engineers. They need to be mo moving closer together, much like a health sciences center. A health sciences center is, is very much a conglomeration between a medical school and a hospital. 
that becomes a teaching hospital. And so they integrate in practice with education and research uh, quite skillfully. And we don't do that yet uh, very well on the engineering side. And, and part of the reason is, is because our business model at, at engineering schools is not, uh, uh, doesn't include the practice component. But the other part is that industry also doesn't include the teaching and the understanding of, of educating the next generation of engineers that teaching hospitals do. So a big part of that, that we're, I think we'll probably do a lot of talking about this afternoon, is how do we converge those business models? How do we get the engineering business model to converge with the, uh, with the corporate business model such that we can get that, that unity in, in education that, that we need uh, for this? And the other part of our, our uh, program is the integration throughout the curriculum of all these different uh, concepts and what, what we call more of a, uh, um, a spiral shaped instead of a, a, a linear shape of education which a lot of engineering schools traditionally have and even traditionally medical schools were very linear shape. You get the lecture first and then you get to the practice later on. What we're trying to do is integrate the, the, the theory with the practice throughout the entire curriculum with a sort of a design practicum which is the, the, uh, the spine of the program so there's design uh, uh, and design learning and design thinking throughout the entire program and then we in a spiral fashion move along uh, between technical skills and professional skills throughout throughout the program um, and just just let me finish here my father didn't give quite as good as quotes as as Nick did so I'm going to keep steal a couple of quotes that uh, from uh, some people that you might know the first is Simon Ramo by the way these are pretty old quotes so this kind of thinking has been around for a long time Simon Ramo was one of the original founders of uh, TRW and a founding member of NAE and I think it was almost 25 years ago where he talked about uh, the need to go into what he called the greater engineering and the key part of what he was talking about is the ability for engineers now to work at that interface between technology and society. We've been talking, I think I've already heard this morning a lot, all the interesting things in life happen at the interface, right? And that's where engineers now need to work. Traditionally, they worked entirely within the realm of, realm of technology. That doesn't work anymore. Engineers have to be at that interface between technology and society, which means that they've got to have uh, skills at both ends. They've got to have technological skills as well as society, uh, cultural-based skills as well. And the last quote is from Sam Florman, who is an engineer and author. If you haven't read the book, Inter The Introspective Engineer, it's a, it's a very good read. And a, a quote out of the book is, is he says that we live in a technological age and our engineers should be leaders and our leaders should be engineers. And to me what he's saying is engineering should be the liberal arts degree of the 21st century. We are in a society dominated by technology. Our leaders should understand technology as well as they do uh, the society that, that, that they live in uh, as well. And so we need to be developing the next generation of, of leaders at all levels, at the corporate level, at the government level, and, and, and at the uh, um, uh, society level uh, as well. Thank you.